Hello everyone, thanks for joining me. Once again, we will be discussing the Wings of Fire family tree. This time, our focus will be on Book 2. We will continue building off our existing trees and creating new ones. I'll recap the rules really quickly. We'll be including biological families, found families, and romantic relationships. We will not be including who hates who, because that'll make things illegible. Check out the previous video to get caught up, because we are diving straight into the prologue. In the prologue, we meet a familiar sea wing, Webbs. The remaining guardian was dreaming before meeting another sea wing by the name of Nautilus. Introduced as the leader of the Towns of Peace, he comes forth with two more dragons by his side. He is with an ice wing named Cyrus, and a mud wing named Crocodile. Nautilus and Cyrus verbally berate Webbs for not taking care of the dragons well enough. Before it turns into violence, Crocodile knocks out the two dragons and allows Webbs to escape. He flies off, making his way to the Sea Wing Palace. Act 1 presents us with the Dragonettes of Destiny along the beach. A sudden Skywing patrol appears and everyone decides to hide. Tsunami suspects that one of the isolated guards spotted Sunny and attacks them. The Skywing is pinned down by a log the DODs found and continued their adventure to the Sea Wing Kingdom. We learn nothing about the new Skywing. Fast forwarding a few days, we have Tsunami sneaking away from her friends to find any Sea Wings. She meets a rather handsome fellow and they start flashing their scales at each other. Tsunami misunderstands an affectionate hug as an attack and claws her new friend. The Sea Wing is named Riptide, who Tsunami has a mild interest for. Riptide doesn't reveal much about himself other than his negative standing with the Queen. Despite that, he brings Tsunami and the rest of the Dragonettes back to the Summer Palace. There, we meet Shark, the Defense Commander. This scary looking Sea Wing is actually Tsunami's uncle. Their connections are revealed when they both flash the scales on their wings. They have the same pattern, which means they're related. This means that Queen Coral's brother is Shark. The Quintet make their way into the Summer Palace where Tsunami reunites with their mother. Upon contrary belief, we find out that Tsunami is not the only heir to the throne. Turns out, she has a sister named Anemone, who is several years younger than her. The DODs are taken to a nearby cave in the Summer Palace while a new character is shown. Moray is introduced, with the Queen asking her to deliver a message to Blister. She willingly obliges, and Tsunami is able to have a conversation with her mother. We don't know where Moray fits in the tree just yet, as it's not revealed in this scene. We assume she's merely a messenger for the Queen. Lacoon is also revealed as a meal prepper. Like Moray, we aren't given any information about her relations to the royal family. The Queen and her daughter talk about Tsunami's experiences under the mountain. During the conversation, we learn of Riptide's affiliations with Webbs. It turns out that Webbs is Riptide's father. No information is given about his mother, though. After finding out about Riptide's family connections, we are indirectly introduced to Tortoise. She has the job of keeping the royal hatchery guarded. We find out that Queen Coral is expecting two female dragonets at the end of the week, which means more sisters for Tsunami if they survive. With that, the trio make their way to Queen Coral's writing room, where we meet Whirlpool. Whirlpool is a relatively old dragon compared to Tsunami, and is Queen Coral's publisher. On top of that, he's also Anemone's teacher. Here, we learn something rather disturbing. Queen Coral selected Whirlpool to be the heir's husband. If Tsunami wasn't here, Anemone, a one-year-old dragonette, would have had to marry him. Now that Tsunami is here, Whirlpool would have to marry her instead. It doesn't make the whole age gap thing better, neither sisters like Whirlpool anyway. We do find out that Tsunami has an older sister by the name of Orca. Queen Coral tells us that she was a talented sculptor and challenged her for the throne. Queen Coral barely won the challenge, but survived nonetheless. After Whirlpool's introduction, Mori returns with more information. Here, the book goes on to compare the similarity between Mori's and Shark's appearances. The book hints that the two dragons may be related, but nothing is concrete. Moray is also accompanied by a smaller sea wing named Urchin. We don't learn anything about Urchin, but it seems that he sends messages to Moray. Anyways, Moray reports to Queen Coral about a dead sky wing near the Summer Palace. Shark, Piranha, the Queen, and her daughters go investigate the body. Tsunami realizes that the sky wing is Kestrel, killed by a slash to the throat. She withholds the sky wing's identity to her mother, however. Tsunami keeps the information to herself to keep the Queen's trust, and plans to investigate further with her friends. Upon returning to the palace, Anemone and Tsunami have their own conversation. 
Eventually, the sisters accompany their mother to a council meeting. This is where we meet several dragons, both family and merely servants. In the meeting, we find familiar faces such as Shark and Whirlpool. The council also includes Moray, Lagoon, Pearl, and Piranha. Tortoise is also part of the council, but she's watching the Royal Hatchery at the moment. We have two additional dragons, but they're currently unnamed. I won't go into detail for what each of these dragons' roles are, because it's not the focus of the video. In terms of family relations, we don't learn much from the council members themselves. When Prana is giving her war report, two soldiers enter, one with a burnt wing, another with a bleeding gash. They inform the council that Queen Scarlet may be dead and a successor is on the rise. The successor is known as Queen Ruby, Scarlet's daughter. It's indefinite if Queen Scarlet is actually dead, as some dragons still believe she's alive. Tsunami reveals that she and her friends were in the Skywind Kingdom, and in the arena. This prompts her mother to ask for a sea wing by the name of Gil. After the queen learns of Gil's death, she says that Gil was her husband. Gil was Tsunami's father. Okay, there isn't a whole lot of family development, so here's the skipping part. Separately, Whirlpool and Riptide give Tsunami lessons on aquatic. Riptide learns more about his father. Tsunami realizes her friends are in danger. She's attacked by a mysterious dragon and she fights them off. Queen Korra learns that her royal hatchery is in danger, and the skipping is done. Queen Korra rushes into the royal hatchery, and she doesn't like the outcome. They find that one egg had been cracked open. The dragonette inside had been strangled to death. This meant that there was only one unborn daughter left in the hatchery. Enraged, Queen Korra tortures Tortoise. She pulls out her teeth and beats her into a coral reef, killing her entirely. Afterwards, Tsunami takes the last female dragonette egg and vows to protect it. She takes the eggs to her friends who are submerged in water inside the cave, thanks to the storm. She finds her friends chained, so Tsunami goes to the guards who hold the key. Surprisingly enough, the guards have names. We have Snail, Flounder, Herring, and Kelp. Herring is a special dragon though, because their brother had been previously saved in the book. When Tsunami had asked for the injured dragons to be treated, it turns out that one of them was Herring's brother. The other dragon was not so lucky, however. After the guards hand Tsunami the key, the DoD seek refuge in a cave higher in the Summer Palace. Tsunami explains her experiences with her mother and how she was almost killed. The DoDs give ideas of who the assassin is, and then fall asleep. In the morning, the DoDs are greeted by Blister. Queen Coral arrives, and they all decide to have a feast with the council members. Some members are imprisoned, and Whirlpool shows Blister the Sea Wing's secret weapon. The DoDs are left behind, and it's just Tsunami who joins the presentation. Anemone is revealed to be an Animus, a dragon who can cast magic. She is given orders by Whirlpool to complete meaningless tasks with her magic. Anemone retorts, claiming that she doesn't want to turn out like Albatross. Albatross was another Animus who went from heroic to evil. Because he was an Animus, and the only known Animus in the Sea Wing tribe is Anemone, it's safe to say that he is a distant ancestor of the royal family. Anemone also reveals that Moray and Shark are related, Moray being Shark's daughter. Blister hears rustling and finds webs. Tsunami saves him from being killed by Queen Coral. Here we learn how Webb stole Tsunami's egg. With help from his wife, they were able to take the egg without hurting anyone. Webb's escaped, but his wife was sent to the front line by Queen Coral. On the first day of battle, she was killed. We still don't get a name though. Urchin returns with a message, saying that they found a suspicious dragon. That dragon happens to be Riptide. Riptide is thought to be part of Webb's operations. Before the Queen takes action against the two, the DoD step in and protect them. Webbs and Riptide are imprisoned, and Tsunami takes a job to protect the last female egg. Act 3 is when the killer is finally revealed. In the hatchery, Tsunami is attacked by Orca's Animus Touch statue, revealing that her older sister was also an Animus. She defeated the statue and the egg was able to hatch without complications. Tsunami named her new sister Auklet. Before the DoDs decide to leave, Blister and Coral imprison them in an electrified prison. That's when Anemone arrives to help. She uses her powers to find the dragon who attacks Tsunami in the tunnel. This dragon turns out to be Whirlpool. And then Anemone makes him trip into a pool of electric eels. The DoDs escape with webs and Riptide while the Summer Palace is under attack. As they escape, they meet Crocodile who helps stage the attack. Glory uses her magic death spit, and Crocodile is no longer. 
While they escape, Webs is poisoned by Sandwing Venom, and Riptide stays behind to protect the kingdom. In the epilogue, we cut to Marasir talking to Nautilus. We find out that Queen Coral and her Dragonette survived. Nautilus is setting up a group of false Dragonettes of Destiny, and we also have Marasir sending an assassin for the real Dragonettes of Destiny. For some reason, when I read this years ago, I didn't remember most of the plot. I think I was just really excited to get to Starflight's chapter because he was my favorite character at the time. Um, rediscovering the story was really refreshing actually because I had just finished um, Arc 3 about a month ago. Uh, Gil's death has always stuck out to me as memorable, uh, for the wrong reasons, obviously. Um, and Tsunami's family tree is actually really big. It's a lot more than I was expecting. Um, but yeah, that's it for book 2 for the Wings of Fire family tree. Uh, let me know of any connections and maybe give me some ideas of what I should do next. I appreciate you all for being here and thanks for listening.